Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. This is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for February 28th, 2023. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, certified professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is the webcast and podcast that digs deep into the clutter that piles up between you and the life you want to be living. We explore the habits and behaviors that lead to clutter, and we suggest strategies to slow the accumulation, reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we decide to keep. If you're new to our Zoom meeting, we want to let you know that you can share your comments and questions via the chat feature, and I'll try to make sure Gail addresses them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question yourself via audio or video. We're also streaming the webcast live on Facebook, so you can share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. We're going to start, as we usually do, by talking about last week's tittle, which was called With Gratitude. The assignment was to set an item free and to express your gratitude for the role or meaning that it once held for you. Let's hear from our participants in Zoom and on Facebook, who joyfully and gratefully set something free this week please let us know in the comments. I didn't find a response this week in which anyone explicitly tackled last week's tittle, but we got a note through the website last week that I wanted to share instead because the writer managed to accomplish part of last week's tittle even before we assigned it. Another one who likes Samudra is channeling our tittles in advance. This one comes from an anonymous viewer from Turkey. She writes, I've really been enjoying your YouTube videos and find them super helpful. I've done a lot of decluttering over the years. First begun by not buying, which I think is key to a sustainable decluttered lifestyle. This past Valentine's Day, I decluttered old love letters and gifts from past boyfriends. She suggested we assign that task as a weekly tittle. She goes on to say, I'm also finding it helpful to take time out of decluttering to actually use the crafting and art supplies I've collected over the years. This in turn has the effect of creating more space as the supplies have been used up. That's not to say I do that with every supply. I gave away my expensive oil paint that I got through an art grant years ago. That was painful, but I knew I would never use that type of paint. I prefer the cheaper water-based ones, LOL. <laughs> Lots to talk about there, Gail. Right, right, right. So first off, not buying or buying less is a, an important part of designing a sustainable decluttered lifestyle. As you said, um, shifting your buying behavior has an upfront impact to not making your house um, cluttered by letting there be less in there to deal with. So good on you for starting there. <laughs> And then it's also great that you cleared away the letters and the gifts from your past love interests. I hope that you were able to do that with gratitude for how they once made you feel. Maybe we can challenge all our listeners to declutter that category as a future tittle. Um, some people are surprised to find how much they still have of people that are not in their life anymore or relationships that are gone. And sometimes they don't go into them because they think it's going to make them feel sad. And uh, sometimes they just have forgotten that they're there and then they ignore them. But, uh, you know, it's, it's always a good category because if it's somebody that's not in your life anymore, uh, either getting rid of all of it or keeping a small representative sample and letting the volume go um, makes your collection reflect their status, their current status in your life. And so always a good area to work on. <clears throat> And I really like that you're uh, trimming your arts and crafts supplies too by using them up for what you bought them for. That's always more fun if you're being creative. We want to encourage our artistic and crafty audience members to shop for your from your own store. Go digging around in your supplies and see what you got in there. It's also a great idea to evaluate the supplies from time to time and remove materials or media that no longer appeal to you. Like she gave away the uh, oil paints that were not her preferred medium. The less unwanted stuff you have cluttering up the craft room, the more room you'll have to do your craft, to be creative, to express your creative ideas. So um, totally worth it to go in and fluff your craft supplies and see what can be used to entertain you and what needs to be gone because you're not going to use it and make some free space so you can be, you know, you can flex your creativity wings. <laughs> Get into it again. Bridget shared. 
I let go of our steam cleaner and a lot of stuff from my career as a color care teacher and consultant. It's very freeing. It is, isn't it? When you, uh, when you shift into, I used to do this for a living, but now I don't. And I kept all those supplies because I was working with them. But when you stop working with them, they become, you know, rocks in the corner. <laughs> you can get rid of, right? Big souvenirs. You're right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Deborah shared, I got rid of two wedding gifts from my 20-year marriage. I have been divorced 15 years. <laughs> I have also released several boxes of eBay inventory. Oh, there you go. And I'm I'm assuming that means things that she had had she was trying to sell was selling, yeah. and maybe did not successfully sell. Amanda said, I decided to give away a clock I got from my late aunt's house. It looks nice, but it's not my style, and it always gave her trouble. I don't have room on my wall for a bro- broken clock I don't like, no matter who it belonged to. There you go. That is 100% right. Good on you. That was a good way to look at it. Woohoo. She added, I can pick out my own clock or go without. <laughs> or go without. Right. Exactly. No no need to hang, to hang the broken clock that annoys you just because it came from your aunt. That's totally true. And I'm sure that you have other wonderful memories of your aunt that the, the just giving away of the clock doesn't change how you feel about your aunt or what other things you kept from your aunt. So, you know, good good job on letting it go and not feeling guilty about it and getting it out of there. (laughs) Big report from Seuss who says, as we speak, my better half is taking my phone out to photograph my 1994 minivan. My son has been driving it, but now has another car. I tried to think of other uses for it. I tend to reuse and hang on to things, but someone else can use it. I will try to try to post it on Facebook marketplace or Craigslist as we speak. A minivan, that's what you said, right? It's a car. Yes. There you go. That a is 1994 a... minivan. <laughs> and somebody will think it's a great project car. So, you know, pass it along to somebody that wants to do something with it. You got your, you know, many, many decades of uh, use out of it. And you can now send it along and let somebody else play with it, b- turn it into something, uh, make it into an art car, um, r- refurbish it and put it back to, you know, factory specs, if that's their thing, there's going to be somebody out there that wants to play with it. So good for you. You've honored it. You've held it for a long time and he's taken the photos and you can move on and make space in the driveway again. (laughs) That's a big car, right? A minivan takes up a lot of space in the driveway. (laughs) Darn right. Rejoice asked, does tossing out a bag of now petrified chestnuts count as following the tittle? (laughs) <laughs> I, I think the question there is did you did you set them free with gratitude did you did you <laughs> did you think about the role or meaning they once held for you that might it might be a little bit of a stretch but hey it's it's stuff we can that, roll with it <laughs> we'll roll with it because it's stuff that did not need to be in your house and now it's right gone. Right. Anything that is that was a food stuff and is now petrified absolutely needs to go. So good for you. <laughs> well, and she said, I kept forgetting to use them. Oh. At least they hadn't turned moldy. Right. That's, I think that that's what ha- that's just what happens to food if there's too much in the pantry or yeah. too much in the fridge. You forget about it. You can't see it. It's behind other things and mm-hmm. it's just too easy to. Too easy, too easy to lose things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catherine reported she gave a grandma's mother of pearl necklace to a great, great granddaughter. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. And I'm sure that the great, great granddaughter was happy to have a new piece of jewelry. So that's awesome. Great to share it and, and pass along if it's not something that you want to wear or keep. Ginger said, all my old letters were accidentally dumped by my husband. <laughs> hmm, that sounds old, a little old suspicious. Old love letters? <laughs> <laughs> he was making a point, <laughs> which well, is... Well, no, I mean, mm-hmm. I think we should, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, because that, that sounds mm-hmm. like, you know, that would be, that's a little transgressive. That was probably a legitimate accident. <laughs> She says, I need to clear the clutter in my craft closet to reach most of my craft supplies. Right. And I have to tell you that um, that's 
that I mean, a craft closet is just like a clothes closet. If you can't walk into the closet and reach the stuff, you've effectively cut yourself off from using it. And so it is very important to keep the closets usable and not be throwing stuff on the floor so you can't even get in there. So go in and dig out the floor first, and then you can get in and see about the rest of the stuff that's in there. Um, it is not it is not a space that you fill up 100% and expect to be able to use. And so um, you want to convert it from storage only to active use. And how you do that is you give yourself access again. That's a good goal to be able to walk in and get to things so that you can see what's there. Uh, that's a good um, primary goal to focus on right now. Ginger added, added, it really was an accident. Other keepsakes were with those letters. Uh, and they went also still a little sad about it. Oh, uh, okay. It is, it is rough when you, we when can you pout get with you. decluttered without intending to. That right. <laughs> well, and you know, it's a small collection and, you know, it, it, it could have been that you got decluttered by Harvey and half of your house went out into the front yard. So uh, it's a small collection and I'm sorry that you lost some mementos. That's always a sad thing. <clears throat> um, lots of progress reports this week. Emily Sue said, made the decision to donate my late grandmother's fine bone china set. Mm. It is a sentimental item. So the decision was hard, but necessary. And created some room and so that you're not the steward of the china set anymore. And it, passing it along to let someone else take care of it. I hope that you took some pictures or kept a teacup or you know, something along that line um, so that you have some, because it sounds like you still feel a little attached to it. So um, I hope that you gave yourself a way to remember them and before you pass them on and good for you for facing that hard decision and, and still accomplishing it. That's, it's hard, but you're right. It's necessary and it takes uh, some effort and will, and I'm glad that you were able to do it. Okay. One more comment and then we'll get on to the, to the main event. Pat okay. said, after my successful garage sale last weekend, where I made $277, I gladly gave about 80% of the leftovers to a reseller. Excellent. And let them take it away. Wonderful. Good job. Very good. Living on a fixed income or struggling to make ends meet puts professional organizing help, custom storage solutions, and expensive products out of reach for many of us. But a tight budget does not have to be an obstacle to the organized life you want to live. Today, Gail is going to offer suggestions for lower cost or free strategies and solutions for the do-it-yourself organizer on a modest budget. So let's start with our survey results. To get a sense of what kind of human resources they have available, we asked our audience to describe the help you've received in managing or organizing projects. And 45% of you, so just under half, have been solely responsible for decluttering or organizing your own homes. We feel your pain <laughs> and we're always here to support you. So at least you don't have to feel like you're doing it on your, on your own. Um, we want to be your silent partner in the background if, if you're um, doing it by yourself. 25% um, have enlisted other family members, uh, other members in the household to help. 9% have hired a professional organizer and another 9% answered other and then mentioned resources like Volunteers for America and having an accountability partner, uh, veterans free pickup or various paid helpers. And then another 9% have gotten help from friends or family from outside the household to work on their projects. So people that don't live in the house currently, but they are, are your friends or your family members that come over and help. Um, you know, this is the category that's always a fraught with, oh, yeah. <laughs> with difficulty. <laughs> Bef before you go on, uh, it occurred to me this week that we may not have really told our podcast audience enough about the surveys. We, we, we've been quoting oh, the surveys for right, right. the last several months now, but wanted to make clear to podcast listeners or, or just members of our audience who are not on our mailing list or, and or maybe not following us on Facebook. We've been doing a, a survey each week that is about the topic for the coming week. And we post those. We were doing them in Google Drive. We've recently started posting them on our website. 
And so if you visit our website, you you can find a link to the survey for next week. It usually uh, goes up sometime Wednesday or Thursday. Clutterfreehouston.com. Yeah, visit, visit clutterfreehouston.com. Um, you can also hold up the, the subscribe card because if you visit cfhou.com slash subscribe, you can join our mailing list and then you'll get an email each week that announces next week's topic and has a link to to the survey that you can take. We're having a lot of fun with that and I think our audience is, is enjoying it and really responding to it. Gives us lots and lots of great input on topics that people want to want to hear us talk about and we, uh, we, we'd really love to have you participate in a survey at some point if you haven't done that already yeah please come and uh, play in our it's they're short and sweet doesn't take a long time um, there's usually somewhere between five and ten questions and um and we're and just looking for the, your experience and all of the content questions are optional it, it, the only one you have to answer is the one giving us permission to either share your responses publicly or with, with your name or share them anonymously, anonymously or not share them at all. That's the only one that is required unless you click the button that says, I would like to be added to your mailing list, in which case we need your email address. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. Go on, okay. please. Okay. So we also asked our audience to describe an organizing product, resource, book, video, or other solution that you bought but never used for the intended purpose. And here are a few of our favorite responses. Lynn shared that years ago, I bought my mom a decluttering video from the Slob Sisters in hopes she would get some inspiration to declutter her stuff. She watched it once, had a good laugh, and never did a thing to declutter. <laughs> she just bought more storage containers and furniture to hold the stuff. But there was never enough storage to contain it all. <clears throat> Yeah, that was a you know failed video inspiration. <laughs> Anonym another anonymous viewer said, I paid a professional organizer to review my space and provide me a written plan. I received the plan but never implemented it. The greatest barrier was my inability to declutter at the pace the organizer thought I should be moving. So for me, the problem with that is um, implementing the plan should be at the speed that you are able to do it. And so I'm, I'm hoping that the organizer was not actually putting pressure on you to go faster. But if she was, um, let me just say, I'm sorry that it happened that way for you. I think you have to declutter at the speed that works for you. And you have to do the decluttering part before you can implement the plan. So the plan probably still would, most of it will probably still be useful and work. And so maybe you can either interact with another organizer or um, recruit someone to come, someone in your personal life to come and help you with the decluttering part, doing it at the speed that you're comfortable doing it. And then um, maybe you can circle back and, and implement that plan after all. I wonder and if the, the situation there might have been, you know, the organizer was was eager to schedule schedule appointments and and, and get going get them mm. get them going soon get them all on the calendar mm. right now and well you know from many many years of experience we you've had you've had people who came to meetings and wrote emails to you and talked about hiring you for years before they were really ready to do it before they actually did it mm -hmm. and then you've mm -hmm. also had plenty of clients who you work with them for a few weeks and then they disappear for months or years and then they schedule another appointment when they they're come ready back. to move again. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, and and the, the moral of that story is whatever speed works for you, as long as you are um, feel like you are aiming towards and accomplishing, uh, making progress towards your project goals about organizing the house. And so please don't assume that she was having judgment about you she may have just been over eager. You know, we like to organize. We think it's fun. So she may have just wanted to get in there and play with your stuff and help you organize it. She may have just been super enthusiastic. But we hope that you can circle back and try to implement the plan. It's, you know, it's something that you paid for and the process will probably still be useful. Steve asked, how do you find a professional organizer that won't rush you? 
Do, oh. do most organizers work like you do and start with a, a, a free assessment? Most of the time they do, yes. Um, and you can either ask for it and not everybody writes up a written plan. So uh, some organizer, like I don't do that. That's not something I do in advance and, and I never create a written product. So um, everybody does it differently, but generally there's some form of assessment that you can schedule so that the, the person comes and they're not there for a full uh, appointment time. They're just there to do a review of your space and find out what your project goals are and things like that. And that may or may not be something that you have to pay for, but it will be less expensive than a typical appointment. And so if you go to uh, napo.net, N-A-P-O.net, and uh, one of the tabs at the top is uh, about find an organizer by and then you can code. search by yeah and then you can yeah. search by zip code so that you can get people that are in napo that are within a certain mileage of your zip code and and you know check out a few they're going to explain to you their assessment process on their website so if you go look up some of these people on their websites they'll tell you you can book an a, assessment appointment or what it looks like whether they're going to give you a written plan or not whether they're just going to come and talk to you about it sometimes they come and take photos to help them um, plan for what they want to do. And so you just have to check each, uh, each person out that you find um, interesting and see what they see, what their process is. I the assessment will let you figure out um, whether you feel like it's a personality match, that it's right. somebody that you feel comfortable working with, it's, which is really the goal of the assessment. It's just like going to a doctor and going, mm, I don't like the feel of this doctor. <laughs> this is bothering me. And so, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, it's an, it's an opportunity for both of you to feel like whether it's going to be a good working fit to get together and work on uh, the, the project going forward. So take advantage of those assessment appointments and meet some of the people and um, you don't have to hire everybody that shows up at your door, right? So you can try two or three um, by assessment and see who you like and definitely pick the person that you find um, more comfortable and more suited to you. I would think too that most would be willing to have a, a short phone call with you mm -hmm. before you before you even schedule an assessment, just so you can get a sense of the the personality and the vibe and whether this is someone you would be comfortable working with. Right, and ask some preliminary questions. I, I get those kinds of phone calls often because um, not everybody wants me to do an assessment appointment up front, but. Um, I do get those inquiry phone calls and usually have, you know, 20, 30 minute conversation with somebody about their project and their goals and what's going on for them. And then we make a decision about whether they're ready for me to come immediately and start working or whether they want to do an assessment. And, and then if they want an assessment, I go out and spend an hour with them in their house and do that. And so everybody has um, their own slightly different process, but ultimately they're wanting to talk to you about your project. They're wanting to help you assess what needs to be done. They're wanting to help you set goals and work on the project. And so you just need to do a little shopping until you find somebody that feels comfortable to you. Okay, so the last thing on this list is uh, a favorite responses. And T said, vacuum bags for clothing storage. Those are those vacuum bags. Never use them. It sounded like a great idea. Yes, it was a, one of those great ideas that where you put things in the big, basically it's a huge Ziploc bag and then you put the vacuum cleaner on it and suck all the air out so it makes them flat like a pancake. And um, there was uh, some issues with those bags long-term. They wouldn't stay squashed for an extended period of time. They would stay squashed for some amount of time and then ultimately one of the seals would leak and then it would fill up with air again. <laughs> it would expand. And so they did have some uh, problems over time as a long-term thing. And, you know, some people just didn't like stacking the flattened bags too. So it was one of those, it seems like it's a great idea. And in execution, it was not super, it wasn't necessarily a great thing. And I do use them still, um, not because I can vacuum and flatten them, but I use them because they're essentially really big Ziploc bags. <laughs> they're huge Ziploc bags. And so it's a great way to contain things that can then be like, it's a way to make linens or blankets be in a package that I can stand up and so that it won't fall apart, right? Because it's in this big Ziploc bag. So um, I do use them as very large, effective containers um, in all kinds of places. Um, Rejoice 
self sided stuff. Rejoice mentioned those blasted bags always ripped on me. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I think because they were a, you know, because they were a, as seen on TV mm-hmm. kind of product, there were loads and the market got flooded with copycats. Copycats, and yeah. Cheap, cheap alternatives. And so there may have been some, some good ones where the, the seals stayed sealed and the bags stayed intact. Yeah, but yeah. There may have also been a whole lot of junk that <laughs> a whole lot of the copycats that didn't quite make it. Exactly. Yeah, that's totally true. So we like to visit this topic about um, organizing on a budget during the first quarter of the year because it's a great time to find organizing products in the store. Just like all the small space solutions that come out in August, right at the back to school time. This is the time of year where a great variety of organizing products are available to, during the, this first quarter. Um, organizing products appear in a whole variety of stores that don't stock this kind of product year round, but only stock it during the first quarter before they're then replaced with other seasonal items like Valentine's or <laughs> Easter start showing up. From the local grocery store to the dollar stores to home improvement type stores, you can find products in lots of unexpected places and often get some volume deals at the same time. Walmart, Target, Sam's Club, Dollar Store, Office Depot, even the grocery store, you name it, they probably got an aisle of organizing products during this time of year. Even a drugstore will have some low-cost bins or open containers this time of year. Most general stores have an aisle year round and they change out the offerings with the season. So you can find lots of options and you can find some budget friendly ones too. Remember to check out the clearance sections to see if something pops up on Markdown. My first word of caution here, make sure you go shopping with a plan. (laughs) You don't need to buy everything you see, even if it's a deal. Instead, make a plan for the types of storage that you want. So do you need drawer dividers so you can corral the things in the drawers? Do you need boxes for the photos or the craft supplies? Think about what problems you'd like to solve and keep those needs in mind when you're shopping for supplies. Try some used or repurposed products as very budget-friendly options. There's some buy nothing groups all over or everywhere and where you can get things for free. So check out buynothingproject.org buynothingproject.org to see how it works and to find the local groups in your area. Some of them are on Facebook. Some of them are um, uh, separate websites. So if you go to buynothingproject.org, then you can see the communities that are available. You can search by your area. Don't be put off if something that's being offered up for free is used and it looks dirty. The good thing about plastic is it cleans up easily. (laughs) A little elbow grease with some Dawn or 409 spray can recover anything that looks a little dingy after previous use. I have cleaned up lots of things at clients' houses where we've uncovered something and the client makes a face. Oh, that looks nasty. That looks dirty, whatever. It's like, yeah, let me just go take this to the sink and wash it. (laughs) And surprisingly, it comes back and it looks beautiful and they're happy again. So Uh, Don't be put off by the fact that it's gotten dirty over time. You can always recover it. You can find great stuff on Facebook Marketplace and at garage sales or resale stores. Garage sales offer items for pennies on the original purchase dollar. And Facebook Marketplace has some excellent deals, especially for furniture, cabinets, tables, etc. If you're trying to outfit an area with more storage, you'll find lots of cool options for low prices on Facebook Marketplace. Resale shops have organizing items that likely never got used or were used so lightly as to be unnoticed. Um, And then they're going to have excellent prices, hopefully, in the resale store. They're not going to try to make a huge bunch of money on organizing products. (laughs) You'll have to hunt a little bit more in these kinds of places because who knows if they have anything or not. But if you like tracking down surprise finds, then going on a garage sale slash resale slash (laughs) Facebook marketplace hunt is the way to go to um, indulge your thrill the hunt for stuff. Um, You can also think about the ways that you can swap things with your friends or whatever social group you're currently in. Offer your unused organizing products up, the things that you've tried and didn't like or aren't working for your space right now, and swap them out for somebody else's products that might fit your needs better. Or just ask your friends if they have things they're ready to release. There's no telling what they have that they're finished using. A friend might upgrade their storage systems and need to get rid of old versions. And that's an easy score for you. Um, That happens a lot when people 
buy one system and it's not big enough to contain ultimately like they buy it and it fits for a while and then it doesn't fit anymore and they go out and get a new system that's got bigger capacity and get rid of the old one and so if you can interact with your friends in that moment you might be able to score some free stuff right in that right when they're getting ready to let go of it and you need it you can also source items for free from your own pantry there's lots of food storage container options that can be very low cost or free options for storage that'll work inside drawers and in cabinets. And you just save these items and you use up the food for the free containers that are left over at the end. <laughs> Try Gladware or Ziploc bags. They can hold lots of small pieces in a drawer of any kind. It's a great way to store like with like without taking up a bunch of room. So you have to pick through the Ziplocs to find something, but it's easier to do that than to dig through a total sea of jumbled stuff in the drawer. So if you imagine that you have a few big drawers, but you need a lot of subdividing in those drawers, uh, putting things in a Ziploc bag and writing on them, or even um, just leaving them so that you can see what's in there, it makes, uh, a, it's a, makes a way to use that big bucket and not have it be a complete jumble. You can recycle empty food containers of all kinds to get free small item storage options. So think of them as because their food things are usually pretty shallow, you know, an inch, an inch and a half tall, which means that they can go into more shallow drawers and they're great to subdivide um, those kinds of drawers. They line a desk drawer with office supplies. They can sit in a junk drawer or in a craft room setup. Takeout containers. <laughs> of food even provide lids so things can be closed up if you need them to um, if you think about a cereal box even a cereal box can be a storage container you can cut down you know cut down the cut off the bottom of the box two inches high and there's a long narrow shallow cardboard box for you um, it's a great way to contain makeup craft items kitchen utensils uh, be creative about which way you cut the cardboard box too i mean once it's empty you can cut off the bottom or you can tape the box closed and you can turn it and cut it long ways down each side for a couple of long skinny boxes. Cut it, it parallel to the front and make long shallow trays. Yeah, I was going to say it occurs to me that if you are willing to transfer your cereal to canisters, we do mm. that. We, we transfer it to canisters. Right. We, op we open them up and we pull out the plastic bag and put the whole plastic bag inside a canister because it's a it's a tighter seal. It keeps it fresh longer. Mm. And you could do that without opening the ends of the box. You know, you could just cut around the outside edges or depending on how you wanted to use it, just basically cut off the side you want to, you intend to have open, pull out the cereal in, in its bag, <laughs> right? and put it in the canister and use the box any way you like. Exactly. And, and, you know, really you, you can be, uh, 3d dimensional about how you cut the box up because it could it can be cut anyway and then it's you know it's free shallow cardboard right while we're paused i wanted to shout okay. out uh give a shout out to ashley who is with us live and posted a great uh list of suggestions on in response to the survey um she is an organizer who's new not new to organizing but new to napo oh and, welcome uh, we're glad and, you joined us and offered she said she i save all sturdy materials i have dedicated catch spaces for clear plastic recyclables number one and number three and then she mentioned several other things things that she collects and repurposes uh so welcome ashley and um thanks for the suggestions for the suggestions yeah i'm sure the group will be happy to read your list okay don't forget all the shipping boxes you got coming those of you who are Amazon shoppers um, who get things shipped to the house, you know that they send all those little bitty boxes for those little one-off things that you buy. So they can be reused for free, obviously. And if you want to, you can decorate them to make them more fun. Um, don't forget that the liners of a box are just as useful as the boxes themselves. Sometimes they, you have a box and then inside the box is a liner that is also the shape of the box that can be used separately from the box. So um, don't forget to dig through those. 
don't forget about your jewelry collection in the closet. So I bet you have a lot of little jewelry boxes, little tiny jewelry boxes sitting empty in the closet because you took the piece of jewelry that you bought out, but you couldn't bear to throw the box away. <laughs> so there's probably lots of little jewelry boxes out there that can be opened up and the box and the lid from the box can be used as separate little containers. Those would be perfect inside a desk drawer to sort um, little office supplies in a craft room to sort various kinds of crafts. That, those would be a great free short-term category in the craft room that, you know, after you live with it for a while, you might want to buy something more permanent, but they would be a great, um, they're sturdy enough to hold uh, some stuff and you can lay them out in a drawer or on a shelf and fill them up and they'd be very useful for that. Uh, mayo jars, cut down milk jugs, soup cans, mason jars, they can all be used as containers of small items. And they're better if you can easily get your hand in the jar. Uh, so a wider mouth is better. But even if you can't, you can pour the contents out when you want something. So uh, those jars are definitely will make a free, give you a free container to subdivide. And particularly in, um, in, in your craft room, because a lot of those jars are going to be clear. Um, if you're one of those people that has been um, making or in saving jelly jars, um, mason jars to do um, your own canning in and you don't do that canning anymore there's a whole set of you know 12 or 15 or 24 or 48 however many you got out there <laughs> of jars that can be available to be repurposed for um, particularly in the craft room Re rejoice shared uh, the clear plastic clamshells that hold fresh greens make good storage storage organizers in drawers or under the sink yes they do and there are lots of other single use plastics that could work um it can be captured you know our our the pods for the dishwasher come in a very sturdy tub now if you buy the name brand they're sort of designed so that it you have to tear a piece off and you have a little latch left which makes it not that great but what's, what's interesting is we recently bought some store brand and it's a much more reusable container. So honestly, it's kind of kind of something to pay attention to as you're buying products in single-use plastic containers is look at that container and think about will that will I be able to use that for something afterwards? Can I make use of that exactly? And there, you know, the thing about these plastic containers is depending on uh, what kind of plastic they are, they're not going to be super highly durable for forever they're going to get brittle they're going to crack they're going to you know short wear and have wear and tear they may not they're not designed maybe to hold a bunch of weight and if you put a bunch of heavy stuff in them over time they may break down but the thing is they're free and they're replaceable so if it doesn't you know if it doesn't um, survive long term it doesn't really matter right um, I also suggested uh, paper plates or bowls or plastic cups can help you contain things. Um, they're not like, again, they're not designed to be used for the long term, but they're super easy to replace. So if, if they solve a problem for you in the short term and you can use those little paper plates or bowls or cups and uh, sort things in a drawer or sort things on a counter or on a shelf in your craft room, um, go ahead and then you can replace them with something better later or you can replace them with another paper plate when the one paper plate falls apart. I have a ready source of cigar boxes in my life. My dad is a cigar smoker and he saves up his cigar boxes and sends them to me. And I pass them on to um, all my beady friends. But if you know somebody that smokes cigars, let me just tell you, they have a steady stream of boxes that they don't know what to do with. So if you know somebody, uh, you can go find them and beg them for their supplies and they will be, you know, they work through a certain number of them every year and they can hand you over that collection and they'll be happy to save them for you and give them away because they really, you know, those boxes are really very sturdy and sometimes also uh, fun and decorative and they all have lids of some kind. And so it's totally worth saving them if you know, if you know somebody that smokes. Um, and cigar stores uh, sometimes will sell them to you for a few dollars a box, but it, it's better to just to find the cigar smoker. <laughs> he has the he has the steady stream of boxes he's got to get rid of. So tap into that person. He or she. Or she. Exactly. You're right. I actually saw a woman smoking a cigar the other day. 
Did you? Which it's not something you see very often, but right. But you live in, um, you know, tobacco country too. It's true. I do. Tennessee <laughs> is tobacco growing country. So um, there's uh, lots of uh, people smoking out there. Darn right. <laughs> so um, one container that people overlook is their luggage. So if you have some old fashioned luggage that came from parents or grandparents or you as a younger person doesn't have wheels on it for instance maybe it's one of those old-fashioned that you carry so typically those are hard-sided and and they're sort of long and flat um, boxes they are great containers they're stackable and they're great for here's the collection of blankets here's a bunch of loose fabric here's yarn here's big volumes of craft paper Here's where I'm storing out of season clothing. You can use that luggage that's just sitting around not being used. Use it as a large storage container and see if you can't put something away. Um, I've seen people use old fashioned um, storage, um, old fashioned luggage as, you know, sort of decorative storage in craft rooms where they stack up um, ones that are um, one on top of the other and use them for containers for fabric or something. I'm thinking of quilters that use all the the stuffing that go into <laughs> that go into a quilt and those big containers of puffy material that are just in the way all the time and that'd be a great thing to put in an old piece of luggage and have it be there as a decorative object in your room. But even if you're filling things up and putting them in your closet to get them out of the way, you can still hang a tag on the outside of the luggage. I had a, add a tag on the handle, just like, you know, a luggage tag would, would be, and, you know, you can write on there, this is fabric, this is, you know, stuffing, this is fill in the blank, so that you know and remember what's in there, but it's a, uh, it's a great way to make use of luggage that nobody likes to carry anymore, they've retired, they bought new, it had a crack in it, whatever, the wheel broke off, well, if it's just going to be storage in your house, who cares if the wheels aren't working, so, um, it's a great way to contain a uh, large a category of large items or a large volume of small things. And the last uh, the last one I'm going to say is inbox trays. Um, inbox trays are the stackable trays that, that they sell at office supply stores to stack paper, to sort paper. But I think that um, they work in an office, but they can also work on a bookshelf or in a drawer somewhere um, to use them. You can stand them up on end and rack things in them up on end. You can uh, stand them on a shelf to make use of the vertical, vertical space of a bookshelf, for instance, and have um, a sorting process that way for items. And it doesn't have to be all paper related. It can be something else. So get a little creative about those inbox trays. Some of them um, have really open sides. And so they don't, they do work for standing up and putting paper in and they don't work in other directions but uh, some of them do have solid sides or mostly solid sides and so you can stand them up and use them as containers um, as a as a set when you have several of them racked up in a row um, there's always uh, everybody has inbox trays sitting around that they're not using anymore and nobody want they don't want to work it out so that's definitely if you ask around your friends they're all going to have inbox trays that they want to get rid of <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go back to the survey, I think. Be before that, let me uh, share from Naomi. Naomi says, my sewing supplies are in a large bamboo steamer with a bamboo lid. It's, oh. nice, it's nice enough that I keep it out on display in my living room. Yeah, those bamboo steamers are pretty because they're round and, you know, they're several inches tall and they have some pretty uh, weaving pattern on the top of it. And th I bet that's nice looking. That's well, cool. They're also modular. They're designed so that you could oh, the you can ones. put as many trays in the middle. You have a, you know, there's a, the, a base and, and trays in the middle and then a lid. Right. And they're designed so you can stack those tray as many of those trays as you need to above one steaming pot. So check if you've got, you know, if you if you have an Asian market or Asian grocery store in your community, they're not expensive either. They're a pretty cheap solution and, and kind of attractive. Right. And what a great idea to put sewing supplies in it. That's a good idea. But it would be a great way if you had several things in the middle, it would be a great way to subset small supplies, you know, tools, or I'm thinking in my head of 
the things that I have in drawers now in my bead room. So like all of my threads are in a couple of drawers or the, the backing materials that I have are in a couple of drawers and those could be in those little containers. I like it. That's a good idea. Okay, we're going to go back to the survey. We asked our audience about the trouble spots, the collections or the categories of stuff for which you find it difficult to obtain or employ organizing and storage solutions. And I'm sure you won't be surprised when I tell you that paper came up a lot. <laughs> paper is a problem for everyone, so you're not alone. It's so much fine sorting, and it always takes a while to get through it. The best advice about that I can give you is to purge the paper first before anything else. Reducing the volume that you have to contain changes the amount of filing work you have to do. It's not really easier to just file it all <laughs> because then you have to figure out how to file for so much more paper. If you can whittle the piles down to what you really need to keep instead of keeping it all, your filing job is easier. Then you want to file in bigger buckets, bigger categories, and not in such fine grain files. And for more details about how to do this, you want to go listen to one of our bigger buckets videos. Or come back next week because we're going to touch on, we're going to do a short primer on paper management next week. Right, right. We're going to try to cover this in more detail. <clears throat> Um, Michelle shared that she has trouble with miscellaneous stuff since it defies her like with like systems. So there's always a few miscellaneous things in your life that seem to stand on their own. So first, I challenge you to step back and see if maybe a bigger category might then include one of your miscellaneous items. And beyond that, I think it's fine to have a miscellaneous category. Notice you just need to notice if your miscellaneous bucket starts to have a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> that means that you probably have another category buried in miscellaneous or that you're giving up on sorting and you're putting it all in miscellaneous. <laughs> a miscellaneous category should be slim with very few items in it, but it makes sense to have a category for the random extras, the random items in the kitchen, for instance, or miscellaneous bathroom stuff that doesn't go with the other categories you have in there. Um, miscellaneous can be a category. It just needs to be a monitored category that doesn't get big. If it's getting big, then you have to go and figure out what are the subcategories that are buried in there. Darby says, my husband's and son's camping equipment. <laughs> I have no idea how to corral the stuff, if it can be stored in the garage or not, and they just dump it when they get home. I'm not surprised by that. Right now, it's all scattered in the garage, my son's room and the guest room. The bins are in the garage. The bins in the garage that I thought they bought for storage are half empty or worse. So I have to say first, this is a classic response of completing the fun and not cleaning up afterwards. <laughs> Even fun has cleanup people. It makes sense that when the weekend is over, when the camping is done, they've just spent a whole weekend out in the woods or wherever camping. Everybody comes home and they're worn out and putting it away doesn't happen that night. I get it. But it should be a goal that in the following week, everything gets cleaned, dried, and put away. You can agree to help them work on it as a family, but you shouldn't do it for them. It's their gear, and the gear's condition is up to them. In talking with them, I'd focus on the expensive stuff and point out that it, if it isn't properly cleaned and put away, it'll likely be ruined, and the money spent on it will be wasted. So <clears throat> sort through the piles of stuff, figure out what needs cleaning, and clean and dry it. And that can be one night of the project and of uh, putting it all away. It's just trying to figure out what things need to go in the laundry, what things need to be wiped down, what th things need to be you know, cleaned with product to get them uh, in better shape. Um, that cleaning process um, when you've been out in the woods is likely um, dirty and messy and muddy and <laughs> there's lots to get rid of. So focus on cleaning first and let that be one night of the project. Then another night can be sorting the stuff into categories and putting them away in the bins that you already have in the garage. So your part of the process can be to make a list of the bin contents and make that be the label for the box. Tape it on the inside, uh, on the end of the bin, and then let your boys stack them up where they go in the garage or in the house. And make sure you get that spare room cleared out. You do not want the spare room to be the random dump, <laughs> the camping gear storage room. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely um it's definitely one you want to clear out and as they're evaluating them i didn't i didn't think about this earlier but as they're evaluating what's clean and getting it clean and sorting it 
it may be that one of the sorting piles is things that can't stay in the garage that need to stay in the house. And I think, you know, some of the sleeping bags might fall into that category. Some of the things that are fabric. Um, yeah. Or if they use, um, you know, if they use like dehydrated foods and things like that, you don't want to yeah. keep those in the garage. So those, those may need to find a parking space in the house, in, in the air conditioned house, basically, instead of in the free for all garage. But um, the bulk of the stuff that people take camping can ultimately be in the garage. It just needs to be clean when it goes in there so that it doesn't, you know, deteriorate, rust, go in wet and get moldy, that kind of stuff. So clean it out, make that, make the cleaning process be one day, make the sorting and putting away be another day. And um, you be a party, but not the, not the sole sorter of the process. Um, they got to clean up after their fun. <laughs> Deborah says it's like going on holiday and having the suitcase sitting for a week. Yes, I, I exactly. Have to, I have to make myself open the suitcase in front of the washing machine. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, and I tend to do, I tend to open it and take laundry out and then walk away and come back the next day and take clean stuff out and hang it up and walk away and you know you, you know it, it does something that requires some attention and you don't want to do it all at once. But um, you definitely want to do it eventually. And you certainly want to do it before the next camping trip. Because, you, you know, if you say to them, if you wait until the next camping trip, then getting ready for that camping trip is just going to be so much harder because you're going to have so much more work to do. So it's definitely worth doing your cleanup once your fun is over so that it's ready to go the next time they want to go camping. Uh, viewers also mention uh, problem areas related to family photos, their jewelry, sporting equipment, plant supplies toys and kitchen utensils we're going to and we're going to try to tackle solutions for some of those uh, op those options in uh, future episodes okay we are just about out of time so let me talk for just a moment about next week okay as i mentioned already we're going we get a lot of questions about how to handle paper so next week we're going to offer a short primer on managing paper the paper you decide to keep we're also going to talk about breaking down a big project um, how to how to analyze a project, break it into pieces, decide what to do first, second, et cetera, uh, and how to how to keep a big project from interfering with the rest of your life. And finally, we're going to talk about things we keep because they're part of the landscape. So join us next week. That is Tuesday, March 7th at the usual time, noon US Central Time. We're still in sync. We will still be in sync with the rest of the world next week. The following week. Oh, and week, then it's time gonna, to our time, time change. After next week's show, our time is going to change, I think. I need to double check that. But uh, daylight, right. daylight saving 2020. Springtime daylight savings might be happening is, soon, is what we're saying. March 12th. Yeah. So next week, we'll still be in sync. The week after that, we'll be an hour out of sync earlier with than, we get out of than, sync with uk right yeah, with the and, europe and, and, and yeah with all, with europe yeah okay most of the civilized world uh, you want to give us the tittle i do this week's tittle is called a buy nothing challenge uh, this week's assignment is to come up with a solution to one of your organizing challenges without spending a dollar or a euro or any form of currency <laughs> identify a group or a collection of items for which you've had difficulty finding a storage system Gather all of the members of that set into one place, get all the objects that you're trying to corral and uh, get them all together so that you have a sense of the volume and the dimensions of the space that they're going to occupy. And then let's go to our website and look for inspiration. You can start by reading the clever solutions that our members, uh, our audience members came up with for this week's survey. And you can find those suggestions at cfhou.com slash results 158 and i'm sure ed will put that uh, in yeah, all kinds of notes. note places for you yeah. to find it um, but generally uh, our audience members made lots of suggestions of clever uh, free low cost no cost storage solutions and so go search in there for some, some ideas and then uh, go shopping in your own store <laughs> check your closets your attic your basement the garage wherever you keep stuff that's not in use wherever you go stash things that you don't want to look at anymore we uh, bet that there's some storage solutions in there that might be useful that you could uh, reuse repurpose for another use don't be afraid to consider unusual options 
No box bin, carton, jar, tray, or piece of unused furniture should be off limits. Or cereal box. Or cereal box, right? And if you're still stumped, decide the problem that you're trying to uh, describe the problem that you're trying to solve to your friends, your family members, or your local Facebook buy nothing group to see whether you might crowdsource the perfect answer from there. So um, particularly the buy nothing group, uh, if you go and say, I'm trying to solve this problem, does anybody have something? And let all of those people think about your problem and see if they have something to give you and uh, see if somebody can come up with a solution for you. So give it a shot, try to solve the problem without spending any money and come back and tell us how it went. We will look forward to hearing about it. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live. To get notifications about upcoming events, we invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by visiting cfhou.com slash Facebook or join our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We promise we won't spam you. You'll get typically two emails a week, one of them telling you that the video and podcast have been published and another one telling you next week, reminding you next week's topic and announcing the survey. So we highly encourage you to, to join our mailing list. We love to hear from you. Please keep those questions, to topic suggestions and comments coming on YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere else that you find us. You can always reach us through our website at clutterfairyhouston.com. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We hope that you got inspired to do some low cost organizing this week and you'll go tackle it and come and tell us about it next week. We're excited to hear and we will see you next week. Bye -bye. Stay warm people. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>